clean up the mess left behind from the storm. Plus, on a mission to clean up Denver's scooter parking problems. I don't ditch it in the sidewalk. That's not cool. Yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. But not everyone approves of the way someone's going about it. I guess some people got to let their frustration out some way, right? <laughs> <laughs> and Colorado's are set to get a bigger tax return check this summer. We can confirm that it'll be at least $500. That much is essentially locked in. And the Nuggets are going to have to start looking for a new team president. Good evening to you and thank you for joining us for Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Andrew Trujillo. And I'm Shannon Ogden. We're glad you're with us tonight. Now, almost everyone who lost power in Friday's snowstorm now has it restored. Almost everyone. Yeah, listen, it took 36 hours to restore power at my house. And XL is still working to get the lights back on for just over 500 customers. Denver 7's Patrick Perez joins us live now from the Jeffco Fairgrounds with more. And Patrick, a lot of work ahead to clear those downed trees and limbs as well. Yeah, and Shannon, a lot of that work has already happened just based on what we've seen here at the Rodeo Arena parking lot. I want to give you a closer look. You can see that huge pile of tree branches just all the way there in the background. I mean, we saw car after car dropping off truckloads of these tree limbs that fell over the weekend. And this is just the one location for Lakewood residents. You can just imagine how busy other locations will be. Not only did last week's heavy wet snow topple trees and damage power lines, it also brought to light the cracks in our infrastructure. Thankfully, it's sunny, but our house is still cold, so it's about 55 degrees in our house. Bethany Koenig and some of her neighbors in Lakewood's Applewood neighborhood went without power for nearly 60 hours. They had to share a generator just to keep their food from spoiling. Thankfully, we're we're fine. We're managing, but I know there are others that are that are struggling more so than ourselves. Their power finally came back on shortly after one o'clock Monday afternoon, but their nearly three day ordeal got her thinking about the future. My husband and I were just talking about maybe we do need to look into having an actual generator hooked up professionally to our home in case this does happen again. Hundreds of XL Energy crews have worked around the clock these past few days to restore power to the thousands of customers impacted by Friday's snowstorm. It was really heavy wet snow and so we had a lot of damage with trees hitting on power lines, poles breaking down and falling over. At the Jeffco Fairgrounds, the rodeo parking lot has become a dump for down trees in Lakewood. I've seen a lot of happening yeah. over 83 years. <laughs> Joe Imordino never imagined the weight of this recent snow would cause so much damage. He and his son brought two truckloads of branches. Oh, look at the size of this sucker. All belonging to one tree from the back of one of his properties. There's nothing you could do, just be prepared and chop it up. A good piece of advice for the next time a late May snowstorm rolls in, just be prepared. We've seen what can happen if we're not. So I'm told that Jeffco Open Space plans to turn all of these piles of tree branches into moats that they can then uh, put at the parks. By the way, this location here um, at the Jefferson County Fairground, this is specifically the Rodeo Arena parking lot. It will be open until Saturday from 830 in the morning to 430 p.m. I should emphasize that this is just for Lakewood residents. There are multiple locations in Jefferson County for other parts of the county. Denver has its own method of getting rid of some of these tree limbs. We have all of that information for you on the denverchannel.com and yeah mulch is a good thing to come of it all right thank you patrick and this recent storm did help with colorado's drought and fire danger today boulder county rescinded its stage one fire ban the county sheriff says the snow and rain they have quote increased the relative humidity and decreased the fire risk for boulder county wet weather also helped firefighters at the plum top fire near pagosa springs that fire is now 33 percent contained and that is up from just 12 percent on sunday and new at five, the Sims fire near Uray is now 100% contained. During a community meeting over the weekend, crews told residents fire mitigation work was happening near the area where that fire began last week. The exact cause is still under investigation. Nine people were shot over the weekend in six shootings across the metro. In the one fatal shooting, a 20-year-old man was killed. This was in Aurora Saturday morning after a party on South Peoria. There was a teen also injured in that, and police say they have no information on a suspect. Now, down in Colorado Springs, a teenage boy was arrested for shooting two young people inside the Citadel Mall food court. The victims, a 12-year-old girl and a teenage boy, are recovering in the hospital. Police say that teenage boy was the intended target of the shooting. The two people killed in a plane crash in Broomfield this weekend were both pilots. 
Investigators say that single engine plane was in the air for less than a minute before it crashed Sunday afternoon. Witnesses reported hearing engine issues just before the crash. Now investigators are still looking into an exact cause and the names of the two people killed haven't been released. Well, love them or hate them, the closer you get to downtown Denver, the more you can count on a scooter being nearby. Mm. Now, how it's parked, of course, depends on who used it last. As Denver 7's Russell Haythorn shows us, at least one person has now just had it with people carelessly parking scooters, and it's now taking matters into their own hands. Call it vigilante parking enforcement. Someone fed up with scooter users dumping their rides in the middle of the sidewalks, scratching out the QR codes so you can't ride. He or she is also slapping a note on those wonky parking jobs, which says all vehicles must be parked in a manner that does not impede pedestrian clear paths. It goes on to say this scooter was illegally parked, resulting in the QR code being obscured. Some people suck and are not considerate. Clearly not an official citation, which is generating a lot of buzz. I think that's kind of nuts, but you know, it is annoying when people park them all off angle or right in the way of the sidewalks. Jay Wilson isn't sold on the method to the vigilante's madness. I guess some people have got to let their frustration out some way, right? <laughs> As a jogger, Kim Scott knows the hazard of scooters blocking sidewalks. Especially at night, if it's not well lit, they just dump them in the middle of the sidewalk. We feel like our biggest risk for injury, honestly, um, is getting hit by one of the scooters. These photos posted on Reddit are getting hundreds of comments online. This one reading, this strategy doesn't punish the person who parked the scooter and therefore is completely ineffective. Oh yeah, definitely. If the QR code's blocked that I would not be I would not be happy about that. <laughs> Especially if I had already stopped at the bar. <laughs> we reached out to Lyft and Lime, Lyft responding by saying we encourage all riders to park according to local rules and regulations. Denver City Code is crystal clear with do's and don'ts of scooter parking. The do's, scooters should be parked upright and always maintain five feet of clearance. The don'ts, don't block sidewalks, curbs, or entryways. I don't ditch it in the sidewalk. Time will tell if this judge, jury, and scooter executioner makes a difference. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. And Lyft would not directly comment on the QR codes being blacked out or how much it's costing them to fix the damaged scooters. And Lime just got back to us on the QR code damage, saying in part, quote, vandalizing property is a crime and only harms those who rely on these vehicles every day as an affordable, convenient way to get around. The company says it does pursue legal action against those who damage its property. Colorado taxpayers can expect to receive at least $500 in the mail this summer thanks to a new bill signed by the governor today. Under the Colorado Cashback Plan, single filers are now expected to get at least $500 in Tabor refunds, joint filers at least $1,000. The governor says that check actually still might grow depending on May revenue reports. The state estimates these checks will be mailed to 3.1 million Coloradans by September. Nuggets president Tim Connolly is reportedly leaving the team. Sources tell ESPN he's agreed to a five-year, $40 million deal with the Minnesota Timberwolves. So this will make him one of the highest paid executives, and the deal reportedly includes ownership equity. Our sports director, Lionel Bienvenu, will have all the details of the deal tonight for you on Denver 7 News at 10. That's a legal play, and, you know, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Defending his players. The Avs get ready for game four tonight against the Blues and are keeping a special eye out for any further threats against Nazem Kadri in St. Louis. It's a loose puck. I'm just trying to, trying to bang it in. We have a little more rain tonight and again tomorrow, but you're going to love the forecast for the end of the week. Plus, Boulder looks to increase taxes on businesses to help with the city's climate initiatives. I think that the impacts of climate are, are acutely on everyone's mind right now. And a COVID-19 vaccine is potentially on the way for children as young as six months.